San Antonio football. We are back with high school soccer talk this time. We're going to be doing player accolades, MVP awards around the region, and we got some guests for you. Two of them. Stay tuned. Folks, I'm actually excited to be bringing you this segment, just not only because we're going to be highlighting a lot of soccer players around the city and the region and say we're going to be talking a lot of high school soccer talk. And without further ado, we're just going to jump right into it. We want to, first of all, we want to thank our sponsors, Mia's Mexican Grill, San Antonio, Texas, up here by Bandera. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of Soy San Antonio Football Accolades Region State Talk. Season's finally over. It's been an amazing season for everybody. We are very proud of the city of San Antonio. And as well, on this episode, we're going to have two very, very, very special guests with us. Davis Kelly, a state champion himself, who's been to state three times and got one ring for himself. And an outstanding young lady over at Reagan, Taylor Jernigan. You're going to absolutely love this episode. 6A Soccer is joining in via Skype phone that we love what they do six say how are you my man how's everything going benji what's going on brother glad to be on again what a great uh great show we've got planned absolutely we're going to be talking about these two players we're going to be doing some player accolades we're going to be talking mvp awards we're also going to be talking about state champions who won it and what's been going on there but you know what let's get the show on the road right now and like promised, we had two outstanding players this high school season that outshined not only at the state level, but nationally. One of them is a three-time state participant, one-time state champion, Davis Kelly. What's going on, my man? How are you? It's good to see you. I'm great. Thanks for having me in here. No, we thank you for coming in. We absolutely mm -hmm. are ecstatic to come and talk soccer in your career over the last three years. And then without further ado a young lady who's been making a lot of noise all season even last year even her freshman year we've been watching this young lady just grow and progress reagan has been outstanding with this young girl i think in my opinion she had the goal of the year both men's and women's i know uh 6a soccer i know you're listening in but that was one heck of a goal without further ado taylor jernigan two-time district mvp 40 goals 36 13 assists this year it's insane what this kid has done taylor welcome to soy san antonio football thanks for being here of course thank you so much for having me absolutely and then without further ado 6a you still on the line Yes, sir. I'm here. I'm excited for this, these interviews. No, I'm absolutely excited. Let's get the show on the road, y'all. Let's talk soccer this year. 2022, um, all four of us. 2022 has been an outstanding year. Davis, I know you had hopes. We had spoken earlier. You had hopes of becoming a back-to-back -back state champion. Taylor, when we um, interacted with your team and the feeling was that you girls had an absolute state champ team. Taylor, talk to me, run through me, uh, run this 2022 year for you. We're going to get a little bit into your um, uh, your decisions as to go into Texas A&M uh, early, but we're going to get into that right now. Talk to me about this crazy, absolute, insane women's team of Reagan that you had this year. Of course. Well, like, first of all, we've had amazing coaches. I've had Coach McCollum for three years now, and she's always been amazing. And we just got a new coach. Uh, we call her Coach Tiny, and I love her the year we've had her. I just think that we had such a great group of girls this time around. I think everyone was so talented, and I think that we all meshed together really well. Obviously, we lost Jadis early in the season, but we had so many integral parts. We had Brooke, who was playing out wide, and we had Cammie Jordan, who came back from injury. And we had Hannah Cruz and Emma O'Brien and even Mia Olag who came and really showed up during the state during the tournament, the playoffs. And so I just think having all these people is what really made our team special. You know, talking about special teams, you know, we want to relive a moment. Uh, Davis, I know you can totally identify with that, man. Uh, this year, you guys had tons of injuries. 2022, you guys come in an absolute. And, I mean, you guys had gone to state three times, finally got the ring around y'all's finger and then this year man Lee just boy y'all had an intense season but at the end of the day you got the playoffs man talk to me how it was how it was going your trajectory for 22 so it was it was definitely a tough year I mean outside in I think everyone knows that uh early on like you said we did get a pretty you know uh first for injury Jesus Blanco he was our he was our forward and our goalkeeper um just kind of a jack of all trades that guy uh, 
And our first scrimmage versus Southwest, he went down. And, you know, we originally thought just a couple of weeks, but it, he ended up with a completely torn ACL. And that kind of just tra- changed everything. Uh, it, it, the whole lineup shifted. I mean, it, it kind of just was a domino effect throughout the season. And uh, coming in, we had a huge target on our back. It's like everyone would play, you know, their 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 best game against Lee and, you know, rightfully so. Um, you know, you, you want good players want to play good players. So um, they gave it their all. And, you know, if we, if we had an off day, they, they were going to make us pay. Um, people wanted to prove that, you know, we, we weren't really all that anymore. And uh, we just had to, to play our best and try to make do with what we had. And, you know, we tried our hardest. And uh, there's lots of things to build off from this year. And I feel that the guys next year are going to improve and hopefully we'll have a shot at, at district next year. It's going to be a, a good race. You know, you have a really talented young Brandeis team. You got Reagan guys coming back and I think it'll be a fun, fun district to watch. No, it's definitely going to be an absolute fun district. I know six, eight soccer and I, we've been talking about next year a lot, but you know, we're, we're going to wait till we get there, but real quick, um, Taylor, talk, I, I'm, I'm curious. Um, we're non filter. We always like to ask the real questions. Lee winning a state championship in the men's side did that it did you as a player and did you girls as a team look at what the men's did at the men's soccer team did and for a second were you like yo we can we can do this too did, was there inspiration did that inspire you as a player in the city of San Antonio um I think just I think just once we had like ourselves all together we really felt that we could get to state and then one thing added on was just the boys saw on our team also doing so well this season and it was just like like this could have been the the year for both of us and I think it was just like the fire that ignited both sides you know that fire and I, I like to talk about it six eight jump in on this one chime in whenever you want but let's talk a little bit about that fire I know six eight we've sat there a lot watching both of these players from both respective teams San Antonio Lee and San Antonio Reagan. Um, what was one of the most impressionable things that you have from this year um, from these players? Taylor, if you can, you know, talk to us. You know, you're two-time district MVP, newcomer of the year, so incredible three years. You know, you, you, you finally hit that 40-goal season. You know, t- tell us, you know, what does that mean to you? What does that mean to hit 90 goals in three years, 35 assists? You know, talk to us, you know, just a little bit about your career. And then if you can, you know, talk to us about, uh, you know, your decision to leave, you know, leave school early. Um, you're graduating in December and, and heading off to Texas A&M. You know, first off, congratulations with that decision. That's an incredible school um, and, you know, incredible soccer team. But if you can, you know, talk a little bit about your decision to, to leave early. Why? Um, and, you know, what kind of uh, led into you picking uh, Texas A&M over? I'm sure the, the hundreds of schools you got offered to. Yeah, thank you. Um... Really what happened was, especially for during the high school season, I mean, it was just a progression of working and cultivating the game. I think that obviously from not making the playoffs first and forever to finally like getting into our groove and being able to have the people and have this piece of set. Um, When it comes to colleges, I just, you know, you take your time, you want to talk to anyone that's interested in you, but really when it really came down to it, I mean, it's close to my friends and family and they have an amazing academic program an amazing soccer program so I really thought it was the right place for me um on the, like the note of graduating early I mean I've enjoyed a club I've enjoyed high school so much I've loved being there but I think I'm really ready to take the next step in my journey as a soccer player and um I think the way to do that is to be able to get situated during the spring season get used to the workload used to the academics so I can try and you know go do my best when I get there that, that's awesome you know congratulations you know, I agree Thank- with you I- yeah, at the end of the day, I think you're making a, a, a great a great decision. You know, I I've watched that that AM program. I know that you can come in and probably, you know, contribute right away, which, you know, as a freshman is gonna be incredible. But you know, like you said, getting the six month jump, you know, in just you know, some strength training um and, and understanding the workload, I think is gonna help you out huge. You know, and I, I you know, just to jump in, I don't discourage that one thing. I think that's so inspirational, uh, what Taylor said. Listen, at the end of the day. She wanted to grow as a soccer player. And I know I've spoken to a lot of folks and like, man, why, why do we got to leave early? Hey, man, look, let's be honest. Taylor, your academic scores are insane. I probably had that when I was in third grade and then just failed off of everything, man. But it's absolutely congratulations on, on, on your academics, your soccer career, and just leaving leadership where you are at Reagan. I mean, outstanding. Congrats. I love that. Thank you.
you know, and we're seeing that more from, you know, your, your, your club teammate at, at a classic elite, you know, Gabby Sabalos is also leaving um, early too. Oh no, she committed early. I'm sorry. She committed to TCU and then decided mm-hmm. to, uh, to not play um, her, uh, the rest of her high school career. But, you know, the players like her and you are just making the game in, in San Antonio grow that much more. You know, you see so many fans coming out to watch y'all play. You know, if you can't just talk about, you know, your, achieving 90 goals for three years um, and just what that meant to you and especially hitting the 40 goals this season? Um, well, you know, first off, you never score without somebody passing to you. So like you always have Brooke who was like leading and assists on our team. And I think it just, I feel like it just shows all the work that uh, personally I and the team have put in and finally being able to hit 40 goals a season. I mean, it's amazing. It doesn't happen very often. And so it just felt like like at the close of my high school career, I was able to do something that I really wanted to do. And that was score 90 goals, which I think is amazing. Yes, I got it. I agree with you. Can you tell us? (laughs) I agree. Um, I scored three goals in my whole high school career. (laughs) Yeah, but you're a defender. (laughs) But they're, hey. That's great, that's great. (laughs) Davis, that goal that you had this year, though, was a banger. That was all right. Wasn't as good as hers in the playoffs. She she broke that girl. She ended her career. Oh, <laughs> oh no, that was oh, bad. No, but I mean, bad. yeah, dude, that that. So Davis, to you, dude. I mean, yeah, you're not much. We we've seen you. We know what you can do at goal. But let's be honest, man. One of your highlights that you did this year, dude, was game one, year one, twenty twenty two. I mean, you guys had to fight back to tie a game against Reagan. And the game was basically done if this goal would have come in. I see your little blonde Q-tipped head run like 45-yard sprint, slide tackle at the goal, stops the ball at the goal line. Six, do you remember that? Of course I do. I remember that. And you also had the the same type of play in the playoffs too last year. Insane. Absolutely insane. So we have top defense, top scorers. Davis, talk to us a little bit about that that moment right there. That 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 one play is just probably going to be what everybody's going to remember Davis Kelly for. Yes, Taylor's going to be remembered for that uh, playoff game in Johnson. Outstanding mentality, outstanding IQ, float tip, goal, beautiful. Davis, talk to us a little about that one goal. Uh, well, that, that that was definitely a great feeling, uh, especially versus Reagan. Um, you know, everything aside. Reagan's our rival. That's that's no secret. We can we can have our our district beam rival, which is Churchill. But who cares? You know who cares? I'm not saying who cares about Churchill, but it's Reagan. You know, it's always going to be us and Reagan. And uh, I feel like just just uh, the guy that shot at Jack Hilliard. I grew up with that dude. And uh, as I was sliding, as as soon as I turned around, I kind of did like a 360. I was in the net on my back. And I just picked up my head and I saw. You know, the, the Reagan crowd with their hands on their head and the lead crowd was like, screaming. And then I just see Jack just like start smacking the floor. And uh, that was just really satisfying for me. I mean, it sucked because like five minutes later we got scored on. But uh, that's something that I'll remember for the rest of my life. And that was definitely I'd say that was the most fun game I've ever played in. Just a, a great atmosphere. And uh, I mean, all around one one tie first game of the season. It, it kind of was like really just a a great introduction to to how our district was going to perform and what kind of games were going to be on display. And uh, unfortunately the second one didn't go as uh, as planned, but you know, I still remember that first game and I'm glad that we had that that good competition to test us. Davis, so. I, I agree to you. Know, I agree with you. you know, the the way the you know district 28 was this year, it was probably one of the top districts in I would, for me in the state other than was it district 26 with the uh, Lake Travis and Westlake um, but, you know, talk to us a little, a little bit just about the, this district, District 28, how tough it is, you know, how, how stingy the, the defenses are, how good the goalies are, you know, um, and, and how good, you know, some of the offensive players are. You know, you see a, a, a player like Jake Salas, a sophomore, but leading the district with 20 goals. It's not like other districts where you, you're going to have a, a, a golden boot winner with 35 or 40 goals. Um, so just talk to us about, you know, how tough District 28 truly is you know, Lee being the, the catalyst for the last, you know, three years um, and just you know, how tough this district really is. Well, I feel like you can look around San Antonio and uh, the, the greater South Texas area and you can see districts that, you know, I'll, I'll put Southwest as an example. You see them constantly going through teams 
seven, eight nil, 10 nil, 12 nil. And, and you don't see that in our district. You see crazy score lines. I mean, uh, Churchill is, you know, one zero Reagan, Roosevelt, one zero Reagan, whatever it is. It's any game you can show up. And if you don't give it your A, then someone can, you know, someone can beat you. And that's what I liked about this district. Um, especially this year. I mean, it's no secret. We, we weren't as complete as we were in the, in the years prior. And, uh, you know, if we didn't show up, if we made one simple mistake, we were going to be digging ourselves out of a hole um, early on. And I just love that this district, anyone can beat you, you know. Yeah. You can't show up to any team and say, okay, this is, you know, this is this team. We beat them 7 8 nil in the past. You know, I don't want to call out any specific program, but, you know, in the, in the years prior, we, we've beaten Clark by a wide margin. This year we're up. Um, first year away and you know in the first 10 minutes we're down 2-0 to Clark and we're looking around what the heck yeah. happened well, we underestimated them because everyone has that talent and everyone has that yes. ability where they can it, it's no longer like a, an extreme upset it's like okay we're all at this level we're all soccer players the difference between us is, is not much it's whether or not you bring the right mentality to the game and that's something that really strengthens our district and it's no secret that we had one of our uh, our district teams Reagan go five rounds four rounds deep it's because they're tested so you know, so well and in yeah. their own district. And that's something that's really strong and, and, and really can benefit you in the playoffs. I agree. You know, it's, it, you know, it, you, it, it shows, it makes each team, you know, to me, battle tested um, when it comes, especially when it comes to playoffs. And, and speaking of Reagan and speaking of the playoffs, you know, you guys lost in the, in the state championship um, game, you know, your freshman year. What mm. can you remember? Cause the next year you guys bounced back and unfortunately with COVID y'all were number one in the country. Um, number one is in the state, you know, tell us a little bit, you know, or do you have any advice for Reagan, if any of those, their players are listening, you know, losing in the regional finals um, and what, you know, what it took for you guys to bounce back um, and get, you know, get to, uh, you know, being number one in the state the next year. And then the following year, y'all went to a, uh, won the state championship, you know, so do you have any advice for your rivals, you know, for, you know, losing in the finals and how to, to bounce back for next year? Well, yeah, I mean, um, it's a terrible feeling. I honestly, I didn't even play very much, and I felt like I didn't have a purpose. That whole summer was just kind of like blank. I kind of had brain fog. Like, I didn't really know what to do with myself. And I wasn't even like a pivotal player. I wasn't even a role player. I was literally just a bench guy. I got the waters for the dudes, and I was there, you know. I was there experiencing it, but I wasn't really on the field much. So, for those Reagan guys that, you know, put their whole their whole heart into it and they got beaten the – in the regional finals, all I can say is that you got beat by the eventual champs and uh, it should motivate you like nothing else. If you're not motivated at this point, there's nothing I can say to you to get you motivated. Um, it's got to be from within. So, I mean, you, you have to be motivated. Uh, you got beat. You were so close, two games away from lifting that state uh, state championship and someone took it from you. So, I mean, I, I'm not going to say anything on the Zoom call that's going to fire you guys up if you're not fired up. So. Well, well said, my friend. Well said. Hey, and then, uh, you know, one more, one more thing and it's something that, that you and I have joked about on Twitter. Um, but, you know, you were two-time uh, first-team All-District. But one of the things I, I truly feel you should be is – and it's got to be a new award for our district next year, and it's a utility award. And, you know, we talked about you having the, the goal line saving against Reagan. You had it the year before. You know, there's players like you, and you even mentioned Jack Hilliard. You know, players that, that play your position that kind of go unnoticed. But as, as a fan and watching you guys play, you know, your defenses are not as good without you playing or without Jack playing, you know, talk to me, you know, right now I want to present you with, with the utility MVP award for district 28 and, you know, well, going you. forward, we'll, 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 na- we'll rename it the, the Davis award, but you know, nah, tell, you me what, what, that. <laughs> tell me what, what it means yeah. to be a, a player like that, where, you know, you, you put your whole heart out to, you know, to help defense. You don't, you know, you don't get the, the accolades, um, but you know that, you know, at the end of the day, you left all out there and, you know, you, you should. I feel players like you and in, in, in your position should get recognized for what you do. You can't put up the goals. You can't make the saves. You know, so just talking you know, about being being awarded the, the utility award year, you know, for, for uh, utility award MVP for this year. Well, um, I think just the nature of being like a six, like you do a lot of the dirty work. I mean, if you give the ball away, it's going to be right on top of your 18. They're likely going to score. I mean, you have a, a lot of stress. You got attacking mids, and attacking mids are usually quick. They're going to be killing you on press. You're tasked with, you know, breaking out, of, uh, breaking out in the attack. You know, denying, uh, protecting your back four. Six is just like a dirty position. I mean, you're not going to score very many goals, and 
you know, maybe you'll make a pass and then that pass will, you know, uh, you, you'll get the assist to the assist is what I'm trying to say. So yes. stats don't really come. Um, but that's just something that you get used to. Honestly, I could care less about the individual stuff. Um, of I, I'm sure it's the same for, for Jack Hilliard. I know it sucks that you see other players getting uh, midfield, but I, I could care less. You know, everyone deserves to be recognized. And um, I, I think that's a cool award. I think that uh, being a well-rounded player, especially at the college game, is, is definitely something that's extremely useful. Um, because whether or not, you know, you come in and you say, hey, I'm a six. OK, but, you know, this is our six. He's six, two. And uh, he's from Germany and he's been playing with us for four years. So where are you going to get on the field? If I'm going to go play right mid, I'm going to go play right mid. I want to be able to play wherever I can. And, uh, you know, it's not about, you know, you know, accumulating stats. It's about getting that experience and learning to do the dirty work and work behind the scenes. I'm not going to be that little cute forward that's going to go score 20 goals and take off my shirt and do a celebration. I'm going to absolutely kill some attacking mid that's coming through. And, you know, that, that scruncher is not going to be put on the stat sheet, but I could care less because that kid's going to be hurting for a couple of weeks and he's going to remember that. So that's, 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 the, that's my individual award. I could care less about uh, midfield MVP. I mean, congrats to Rafa Havalera, by the way. Great guy growing up with him. I uh, love that dude. And, you know, it's, it's great to play against him. And uh, good players want to play against good players. So I'm glad all those uh, SAFC dudes came down. I wanted to play against Bradley Dildy, um, try to stop that left foot, but I never got the chance. So, uh, yeah, basically, thanks, thanks uh, for the utility award. That's awesome, and I think that's a cool award, definitely. I think it's, it's definitely something that needs to be uh, at least looked at because um, there's players that are well-rounded, and sometimes they're, they're maybe not as sharp um, at attacking or as sharp as defending, but they're sharp all around and, you know. That's very much well. What's most important, in my opinion. Love it, man. Very love well, it, love very it. well said. Hey, and, and one last thing, Davis. You know, congrats on the on your commitment to play college soccer at the next level. You know, if you can, just take us through just just a, you know a minute. Just uh, what led you, you know, to make your decision to to go to North Carolina, um, to play college, and you know, just tell us a little bit about uh, your decision. Well, I'll make this quick because I see Taylor sitting there. She's waiting to get talked to. But uh, I I, uh, I I'm just. I was, I really, a lot of research went into it. I went on NCSA and I pulled up all the D3 and all the D2 and all the D1 schools. And uh, I knew I wanted to be in that area. Um, I got a couple of buddies that went up there, obviously, Joey ba uh, Petroni and Henry Bolin. Don't think I'm, I'm quite at that Coastal Carolina level, but I, I, I love the area up there. Um, William Peace is in downtown Raleigh. Um, super gorgeous. I went and visited the campus. I actually sent the coach 10 emails before he responded to me. I was annoying. Got his phone number, called him. I was like, hey, man, like, I booked a plane ticket to your ID camp. Like, you're getting on the phone with me or I'm going to be really mad. <laughs> and then he finally emailed me back. I was like, all right, I can tell you're serious now. Like, I was like, oh, so my nine, eight, my nine other emails. But uh, it all worked out. So um, they play on a great pitch, great education. Downtown Raleigh, uh, it's across from NC State. So it's a smaller education. But if I ever want to, you know, go watch an NC State game or anything like that, that's, that's awesome. And also the refing up there. I'm sure you know I'm super serious about refing. I want to go uh, as far as I can with that. That's a way to stay involved. I'm really trying to go uh, professional as a referee. So um, it, it's really good up there, the refing. There's all sorts of ECNL showcases and MLS next. And it's it was like the totality of the situation. I really love it up there. I'm glad I get to play. And the coach is awesome. It's a bunch of, you know, Hispanic players. And it's all just tiki-taka beautiful. And I just can't wait to get up there and try to do my best up there and play. So. That's awesome. Well, congratulations for your decision. Congratulations and good luck, man. Can't, can't wait Thank to you. watch. Now, Taylor, we're going to turn it on over to you. I appreciate uh, it. Davis, yeah, absolutely. Thanks for sharing that. Absolutely great, great career. Now, Taylor, now you taking off early, going off to Texas A&M. What goals do you have? What what, what expectations? Uh, what, what's the next level for you? We already know that, you know, you're cutting off early and you're taking off. Basically, run us down just the way Davis did. Um, well, I mean, coming from high school and going to a, such a great program, I know it's going to take a lot of work to be able to be a player that even can make a difference at a &M. And so I just want to be able to, especially during this time, I have a few months before I need to go. I want to be able to practice on certain things. I want to get better when it comes to tweaking certain things and being sure I'm the best player I can be when I get there. Um, Goal-wise, I really just want to be 
uh, a good player for a and I want to be able to make a difference on the pitch. I want to be able to just be there and be a player that um, I think my coaches and my players and my other teammates will be able to um, rely on in any situation. Uh, when it comes to like, you know, the future or anything like that, I think whatever, whatever happens, happens, you know, there's always opportunities, especially now for women opening up, I think a lot, but um I just think that really I want to go as far as I possibly can. I want to have no regrets about soccer as a whole. And I think I just want to be able to play to the best of my abilities. Very well said, Taylor. You know, one, one of the things I'm always going to remember this year is that goal that you had against Johnson. You know, it, didn't, it didn't win our, our, our goal of the week, um, which you know, I thought for sure that was my goal. That was my goal of the week. That, that was my goal of the year. Um, can, can you take us through just your your thought process in that moment and in that leading up to that goal you know there's a zero zero game 73rd minute i've had coaches reach out and just say the soccer iq to get that shot off like that in that moment was incredible so i don't know what you what you can remember about that goal but if there's anything you could just you know tell us about um we'd appreciate it Mm -hmm. Of course. Well, the tensions had been so high during that game. It was a will they, won't they? Each team had so many different opportunities. And I think it was just uh, Brooke Castillo worked really hard to win the ball back. And I finally got the yes. ball. And I was able to put on a move on the girl. And I mean, lucky for me, she was, I was able to get her out of the way. And of course, there's barely any time left. If anything, it'd be the perfect time to score because there's less time for them to come back from it. But more than anything, you don't want to take any more dribbles into Cameron Simpson, who is an amazing defender. And so I was just thinking if it could be any moment at this time, like this should be the time that I should shoot and take my shot. And luckily for me and for Reagan, it got us a few more games in the playoffs. Well, congratulations, because that was one of the nastiest plays. And, and I agree, the, the, the defense from Brooke to, to steal that ball to start off that counter get that perfect pass to you. And then your move and, and shot was, like I said, for me, it was the goal of the year. Easily should have won goal of the week. But I know you're happy with, with being able to, to win that game and go on to a um, to the next round. So congratulations. Um, Davis, Thanks. congrats on, on everything. You know, being a two-time first team all-district, a state champ, some, something that nobody will ever be able to take from you. Um, and then, uh, you know, Taylor, Taylor, two-time district MVP, newcomer of the year. Congratulations on, on such an incredible uh, high school career. Selfishly, I wish you would uh, stay for one more year and go for 130 goals, but I get the decision. So congratulations on on everything, you guys. Appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. thank you so much. Absolutely. We are ecstatic. Thank you so much for being on the show, folks. If you guys are listening, this is our, the reason why uh, Lethal had a hard time asking us, who's got the better town, Austin or San Antonio? Boom, there's your evidence. Two, we got one player been to state three times and then we have taylor jernigan who's been crushing it she's only a junior she's taking off early big 12 soccer in texas and then folks thank you so much for being here with us we got like about 30 seconds last words for the city for the community um for your team taylor um for Reagan specifically, I mean, we were so close to having that victory and I just want us to remember it and to want to get it next year because I know we can. And just for the community, like, I mean, if you love soccer, because I know so many of us here do, you have you have the abilities. We might ha- You might have the blessings to be able to go as far as you want to. Train hard, surround yourself with people that you love and enjoy the game for as long as possible. Davis? Uh, do the little things right. Uh with San Antonio on your back, I'm tired of those big white dudes in Dallas killing everything. Uh, you know, we did it last year. Reagan was close. Austin, Lake Travis, they got it done for this region. So let's keep it in this region. Uh, you know, we'll do whatever you need to do. I don't care. Absolutely. Well, the town's proud of, but proud of y'all. Very, very proud of y'all. Absolutely stellar seasons. And we'll see what next year's got for us for Soy San Antonio football. This is the high school meetup soccer talk with Taylor Jernigan and Davis Kelly. Folks, thanks so much for being with us. Wow, six eight. That was absolutely insane. I loved it. I had so much fun doing that. Thank you, Taylor Jernigan. Thank you, Davis Kelly, for being with Swiss San Antonio football and six eight soccer, man. What were your thoughts on that, man? That was incredible. Just two absolute ballers, great kids in the community. Um, I can't wait to see what they do in college, but that was phenomenal. Just a, two great interviews with two great 
student athletes that represent everything about San Antonio and soccer. Yeah, I mean, it puts everything in perspective. Um, there's no, um, how do I put this? I know right now in a little bit here in like 10 seconds, we're going to be getting into the accolades, MVPs and all that stuff. Um, and some very, very, very honorable mentions that we think should have been making that list or should have taken that spot. But that's uh, that's for a different time here in about 30 seconds. But it comes to show this, that the talent and the level, I mean, Davis, since his freshman year, has been riding with Lee, then be, becomes part of that team that lost out at state in the COVID year. And then he's part of the team where he wins it, defense, comes back this year is the remnants of a state champion. And you know what? He held his ground. It was a tough season. It was rough for them, but got him in the playoffs. He's, he's a heart and soul that the he heart was. and soul that and they had, and, and they had so many injuries, man. Lee had tons of it. Julian got hurt like towards the end and they'll be back. They'll, Lee will be back and Lee will be fine. Yeah. They're going to be good. They're going to be great. And then Taylor Jernigan over there, you know, just, I mean, she crushed it over the last couple of years. Outstanding fin- finale to her high school, young high school career. I can't, I can't complain. I mean, the young lady crushed over 30 some goals. I mean, just incredible, man. Just incredible work. Going to Texas A&M as a junior academic standout, field standout. I can't complain. Zig Zay, we got some no. stellar ballers yeah. in San Antonio, Texas. Now let's get to it, man. Jump me right into this segment that we want to talk about. MVPs, we want to talk about the state champions and everything that happened in 2022. Um, I'm looking down here at my notes and I'm telling you, man, it's, boy, I wish I could see, I wish I could see Reagan, but you know what? They lost to the state champions. And when it comes down to the 4 I'm just going to let you know, in Texas, in the 4A, Bernie, back-to-back, insane, insane in the 4A, the men's. And then in the 4A girls, I mean, I don't think anyone was going to get um, to these girls um, when they actually, for these three teams on the fe- on the on the women's side, Selena and um, Selena in in 4A, and then um, you know just Frisco Wakeland, it, you can't get better than that. And then 6A girls, South Lake South Lake Carroll. What can I say about South Lake Carroll? They were the eventual favorites to win the state champion. I mean, you got two young ladies that are going. You know, U.S. women's national team call-ups. I think one of them played against Puerto Rico today on the U-17. It's insane what, uh, what South Lake Carroll's got. And on the boys' side, Lake Travis, and then um, 5A boys, uh, Frisco Westlake, which was insane, men's and women's. Yeah. You know, what can you say? You know, that, that you man, just, just talking about South Lake Carroll with uh, the 6A girls state champs, you know, that that's going to be a, a different show, another podcast, because – you know, them having three girls playing the national team, um, you know, just showing that playing Texas high school soccer is a good thing. It's no joke, man. It's no joke. The Texas high school soccer is a real deal when it comes down to it. I mean, Reagan. But again, you know, congrats, congrats to all yeah, six. All, yeah, all you six know, of them well-deserved. Fris- Frisco well deserved. Wakeland, you know, for 5A winning it on the boys and the girls side. That's insane. That's that, insane. That's, that's incredible. Um, Harlan had a great run to the regional semis that game. That game we were at for uh, for them and uh, and Lake Travis was incredible. They had their shots. They took them, went toe to toe with them, and then 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 the very next day with with uh, uh, Reagan and, and Lake Travis, you know who knows? You know Reagan had really took it to a uh, um, took it to Laredo Alexander, and they got to rest starters. Whereas Lake Travis went toe to toe with uh, with Harlan and, and played all their starters all eighty minutes. Who's to say which one helped each other out? The the game the next day was was a, a great game. Um, you know, it was two nothing. Reagan had their shots. They they missed a couple. I know Aiden Phelan had a goal where it was called offsides. Um, but you know, like Travis got a quick goal to start that game out, and that kind of just you know it, it it made an immediate impact. Obviously, um, but but Reagan hung with them, had their had their chances, just couldn't convert. It was just one of those games for them. So it was the first time they were they were shut out all season. But again, congrats to all six state champs, um, and you know, well deserved. At least we keep a. Uh, Keep the 6A uh, boys state championship in region, in region four, like Davis said. And hopefully, we, hopefully uh, Reagan or Lee or, or Johnson or Brandeis can, can do it for, uh, for us next year. And yeah, absolutely. That's very well said. I'm 100% agreeing with that. So let's get into this nitty gritty of, it, of, of, of what we call 6A. MVP awards were done. Um, district mentions were given. Players were recognized. Uh, 
but it goes beyond this, man. I, I'm, I'm going straight to tell you, this is where I, you know, I know it's coach and how it works is, you know, it's coach submitted, they submit all the works, the goals, the assists and players get mentioned, but let's be honest. There's a little bit more to this list than just what made the list. Everybody deserves to be on it. Not saying no one deserves to be taken off, but there's a lot more to talk about than just the list. Congratulations. I got named. Let's get into it, man. What do you want to attack? What do you want to go for first? You know, well, well first off, yeah, I wasn't planning on, on doing this, but uh, but tonight um, the, around the state, the all regions and the all state uh, uh, accolades are starting to come out. So first, you know, Southwest is already has already actually posted theirs for for the boys side. So really quickly, I just want to give you know give a shout out to uh, um, Hector Montoya and Gabe Solis. Both of them made second team all region. Um, Julian Leon, uh, first team all region, and then uh, Jose Robles, uh, goalie making a second team all state. So, you know, just want to give those boys a shout out. I'm sure we'll, you know, we'll do another podcast and talk about all of our local six A's um, and, and the rest of the five A kids that made all region and all state. But since those came out this evening, just feel like, felt like uh, giving them a quick shout out. Absolutely. I was just looking down right now at my notes and I saw the tweet come out insane. Congratulations to uh, the boys out there in Southwest dragons um, making region and state mentions i mean it's insane what those guys have done out there over the last four years oh man that's one team that I, they're just long overdue for a state champion six a. i'm telling yep, you man yep. they'll, they'll, like get there. Wow. They'll, they'll, they'll get there they'll absolutely. get there absolutely no but, but you know like like you said you know all, all these boys that we're going to talk about and girls that we're going to talk about tonight every single one of them is deserving every single one had had great seasons um but like you said you know the coaches make the selections for uh for mvps for co-mvps and we're not here to you know, say somebody didn't, didn't deserve to be on there, but there are some players that that made first team that maybe they, you know they had they should have considered strong consideration of being being a co at their position or even a second team player that man you know, maybe they could have made a made first team, but you know like you said it's the the accolades and and the MVPs and the first teams it's all great um, everybody all you know it all comes down to wanting to win a state championship but. The season's over, so let's give these kids uh, some props for uh, where's it due. Let's get it going, man. Come on, hit me with the first ones. All right, so uh, let, we'll start with 28. 28, 6 a on the boys' side. So for our overall MVP, Jason Suko out of Reagan. Suko. Um, the MVP for forwards, Pato Tenorio from uh, from Reagan. Midfielder of, uh, of the year, Rafa Javilero from Johnson. MVP for defense, Peace Minnick from Reagan. MVP goalie, Luis Vasquez from Roosevelt. Newcomers, there's two co-newcomers. Uh, co One, Tate Martinez from Lee. And two, Clever Sabonia from, uh, from Roosevelt. You know, all, all of these players all had incredible seasons. Um, you can see why they all earned their, uh, earned their awards. You know, I have, I have no issues with it. Um, you know, one of the things, you know, kind of, you know, I would, I would rather see a, a freshman or a sophomore um, you know, get a newcomer of the year. Clever had an amazing year. He he could have easily been co uh, uh, midfielder, you know, of the year with uh, with Rafa. Uh, but I'd, I'd I'd like to see a uh, you know either a freshman or a sophomore, you know, get that that newcomer spot. You know, you know Tate first year playing varsity with uh, with Lee. He had an amazing year, thirteen goals, seven assists. Definitely deserving of, of of that award. But you know, that's just my little one one little gripe that I would uh, you know bring in with the uh, you know for cm28 no i agree 100 here's a, here's my biggest thing with this um I, a lot of those names are all seniors but a lot of them are juniors and seniors man but this year's field was straight up oh. sophomore junior dominant nothing against the senior class i'm not saying anything that they were not good enough it's just that boy again i agree that some of these younger players should have been thrown into the mix of this consideration of these, of these. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I've, I've got no rosters. issues with, with any of them. Um, you know, Suka overall, you know, you know, what can, I mean, Reagan won, Reagan was undefeated district champs. They yeah, deserve all, sure. all the, all the awards and accolades. Um, you know, so Suko with, with eight goals, 14 assists, um, Pierce, Reagan had the top defense, um, gave up the least amount of goals, you know, totally deserving. Pato at the, at the end of the year um, ended up, ended with uh, 22 goals. Um, but you know, like I said, if we're if we're gonna talk about kids that that deserve, you know, kind of that recognition to go along with it, and you already brought up a sophomore, 
you know, what about Jake Salas? Oh you yeah. Know, Jake Salas oh, yeah. definitely Brandeis. could have been, could have been a co, uh, a I co mean, forward of the year. When you have, when you, when you're a sophomore and you get the golden boot, you know, 21, 20 goals for uh, for district play, um, you know, what, what can you say? That, that to me is, is a deserving of a co. Absolutely. And, it, you know, this is a team Brandeis was that was on the outside looking in, you know, I mean, they weren't even going to supposed to be making playoffs, honestly. They, and then they had to play one last game to get in it. And then Jake Sala shows up, destroys it. I mean, he, yeah, probably, fin- he probably finished with 80% of Brandeis's goals. Sure and, did. You know, no, that's, absolutely. you know, it's not a, a knock on any, you know, on any of their players, but I mean, he, he stepped up as a sophomore and, you know, and led those boys, uh, you know, to the playoffs. I can't wait to see what he does for the next two years. Oh, he's, yeah. he's, he's going to destroy he's incredible. it. I mean, Brandeis is going to be one of those teams. Watch out. I mean, if you guys are impressed with, with Reagan and, and Lee Brandeis is that next team to show a lot of grit to make a deep state run next year and a couple of years to come. There's another player um, that I feel should have been at least co um, mentioned, and that's at the keeper position. Um, there's one, at least one player that was an undergraduate, I mean, an uh, underclassman that should have been mentioned as, as a co uh, MVP. And that was at the keeper position, Sean TV over at Reagan. I mean, what a year for that kid. I, I mean, agree. he I, went toe to toe with the best in the state in the region. And I agree. get impressed, and he's only a junior. Yeah, I mean, why know. wouldn't you put? Why wouldn't you just like, hey, you know what? These two, this guy, yeah, he made it senior. All these great things, but then, Sharma TV. Yeah, you know, Luis. But Luis Vasquez had an amazing year. Incredible, Roosevelt. incredible amazing year. run. I mean, if and, and 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 I get I get the argument between the two. You know, hey. You know, Reagan's defense, you know, led by Pierce and, and, and Logan and their outside backs were, were strong. They had a, I mean, their regional finals for, for a region, you know, regional finalists for, for a reason. But, you know, Sean had to also make those stops exactly. in games. You know, exactly. yes, he didn't take on, you know, the amount of shots that, that Luis took on. Um, and, 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 and like I said, that's why Luis is definitely deserving of, of an MVP award in, mean, my, in my mind. But... He, he, he kept Sean, that. Sean could have definitely have been a co, but also Patrick Gale Patrick at Johnson. Gale. You know, Patrick only gave up 15 goals. His, That's his, another one that needs to be thrown in there as and a he's, triple and he's, co. And he's, and he's a senior. You know, he had he was giving up, you know, point, point eight five goals, you know, a game in, in, in our district. But, you know, Sean, Sean gave up uh, nine goals. His his goal average was uh, was at 0.44 for, uh, for the season. You know, so for me, there could have been a three co yeah. MVP for goalie. You know, what? When you look at, you know, and we talk about the Golden Boot winner had 20 goals. And then we wonder why. You look at the defenses that, that Reagan had, that Churchill had, that Lee had. But then you got goalies like that backing them up. And, you know, Davis in, in our interview today um, said, you know, you never knew you had, you had to bring your A game to every game. You know, Luis is a monster goalie. And here's Roosevelt finishing in sixth place. And you still have to go up against against Luis and try to get shots off on him and that defense, like that, that's what makes this district so tough. All three goalies are deserving of, of a co Luis deserving of, of MVP, but you know, man, just, just another, another uh, position where it's like, man, how, how did these coaches, you know, make those, make those selections. It could have easily have gone. It's hard. I mean, I think you just can't sit there and just try to, it's hard. I mean, it's got to be hard. I'm looking at these lists right now, and I'm, I'm looking at some of these numbers, and I'm thinking to myself, what in the living trash is going on here? You know, like, how do you even make selections from this player to this other player? Um, it's I mean, tough. It's tough. You know, let, you know talk about the, the, the midfielder award with, with Rafa over, over at Johnson. You know, Johnson had a great year, finished in second place. So Rafa had, a, had eight goals, seven assists in, in the midfield position. You know, they're, they're – one of their leaders, captains. Um, but for me, you know, we, we talked about Davis and we talked about, uh, about Jack Hilliard, but for, you know, as people heard in the, the conversation, we already awarded uh, uh, Davis the, the utility award MVP player. So I'm going to take him out of this midfielder um, conversation. And even Jack Hilliard, who would have been a co, you know, utility award winner, you know, to go along with, uh, with Davis. But to me, you have, you have two midfielders in, in, in Noah Lopez, the well, soft, Lopez, yeah. sophomore over over at Brandeis, but also Aiden Aiden Phelan over at uh, at Reagan, yeah, as, Reagan as yeah. a junior. You know he finished with eleven goals, three assists, 
one of their one of their captains control, helped control the midfield. Um, so you know he had just as good as, as numbers, and it's not about numbers, um, but he could have easily have been a co MVP for the midfield along with Rafa. You know, I ha- I hate doing these, man. <laughs> because, I love it because, because because we're talking about we're talking about all these great no, players. No, no, it, it just it just makes me wish to just like redo this list and just mention them all. Nah, nah, right. nah, you don't need to redo but, anything. But, just... but you know, you're right. You're right. I mean, it's it. You know, we're talking about some of these great. We're mentioning some of these great. Uh, talent in San Antonio, Texas, especially after 2022, an absolute amazing year where, you know, come on, let's think about it, man. The regional finals, everything was San Antonio. One Laredo team, two Austin teams, which is Austin Westlake and Lake Travis. Everybody else, San Antonio. Brendan on the girls' side, Reagan, O'Connor, Johnson, uh, Reagan again for men's, Harlan for men's. I mean, just come on. It's yep. too much, too much, too much talent to yep. not mention. I agree. And so speaking of mentioning, you know, let's, so let's give these boys, you know, their shout out. So we already mentioned the, the MVP winners for District 28. So for first team district, uh, uh, for first team all district, for District 28, for goalies, we had, uh, had Shama TV and Patrick Gale. Patrick Gale. For defense, you had Logan Redmond at Reagan, Jared Stronger at Johnson, Gio Garcia from, uh, from Lee, and Seth Warrington at Churchill. You know, Seth... Going back to uh, who could have been a co, Seth could have easily been a co also. Because if I'm not mistaken, Seth was also a, a co MVP for defense last year at Churchill. He, you know, you look at what, what Churchill did. They, their defense held that team together no, and yeah, almost got sure. them into playoffs. Absolutely, Seth had an amazing year captaining that that defense. But you know, we go on. So so midfield first team, um, Aiden Phelan and Reagan, Jack Hilliard at Reagan. Uh, Nicholas Papagani from Johnson, Johnson. Davis, yeah. Davis Kelly and Lee, um, Juan Al- Alves, Chaco from Lee, uh, Noah at Brandeis, Noah Lopez at Brandeis, Brandon Arona, uh, a freshman from Roosevelt, Diego Vallejo from Roosevelt, Travis Matthews from Madison, Miguel Martinez from MacArthur. For the forwards, we already talked about Jake Salas finishing with 20 goals, sophomore Brandeis, Wyatt Anthony, a senior from Churchill. And then Raymond Palmer from Clark. Insane. Look at this. I mean, I, Palmer from Clark is underrated. I mean, in my opinion, that was one of those names that we really didn't get to much talk about. But Palmer from Clark did, you know, an outstanding job, held his own. He tried his best. And, you know, he got, he's got the numbers to show for it. Man. Yep. You know, and, and just looking at the second team, we're not going to list off all the second teamers. Um, and there's no no knock on, on any of those second teams, but that'd be we'd be here all night doing that for the entire city. Absolutely. Look at but this. but just two boys to me that 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 really stood out from the second team list that I think could have should have made first team. First one, and both of them are coming on the forward side. Diego Robles from Johnson. Robles, yeah. Um, another sophomore, he had 12 goals, three assists. I, I think it was Johnson's leading goal scorer. But this, but then also uh, Julian, you know, Julian Sanchez, senior Lee. Um, you know, it wasn't the 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 season that he had last year, but dude, eleven goals, eighteen assists. You got Come on it. now, you got to mention it. You and he's finishing. And he's finishing. Up. He's making second team. That's that's crazy to me. You know, it, it wasn't up to to what he had done last year, but for this year and and looking at that list, both those boys to me deserve to make a make first team. Congratulations to everybody. Yeah, um, absolutely. This first team, insane. second team. You know, just. Just wild. This this is insane. I mean, you just like I said, it, you know, it's just so much happened this year that it, it, it we just have to talk about it, and that's what yep. we're doing right now. That's what we're doing. And then you know, we'll jump into uh um to the twenty eight girls side. Yeah. So newcomer of the year, Isabella Hartis from oh, uh, yeah. from Reagan. Oh yeah. Um, District MVP. We already had our interview with her. DJ. Taylor Jern again, forty goals. Yeah. Um, offensive insane. MVP, uh, Mabry Williams, thirty four goals, seven assists, only a Sophomore, can't Mabry. wait to see where. See, so, so, so that's that's one of those things that, you know, maybe Williams, um, as a sophomore, made the list, and there's something that just, boy, yeah, but, I mean, 34 goals, seven you, assists. Who, who are you gonna? Who are you, you gonna can't put deny, you can't as an offensive offensive yeah, MVP above? And we're above gonna get that. into, and we're gonna get into like other other mentions at, at that level. But Mabry, good Lord, Mabry's just crushing it. Midfield, I can't wait. Midfield of the year, um, Emma Nolan. From Clark. Yes, I'm on Nolan. The defensive MVP, MVP, Haley Adams from Clark. And then goalkeeper of the year, Allison Hall uh, from Lee. 
Only give up seven goals yeah, in a year. Yeah, Hall was stout for the – and they didn't even make playoffs, And unfortunately. I mean, I, that was one of those teams where I was just – you know, but Ali Hall just stood her ground and just said no. And again, this brings me back to a little interview back to um, uh, Davis Kelly, where he said, dude, in our division, there were no blowouts. There were no, no seven zeros. There were no one zero, two zero. Ali Hall, I mean, it was the exact same thing on the girls' side. I mean, it was two, two, two to three, three to two. Yeah. The difference is that on the girls' side, it was two, one, three, two. You know, the girls were scoring goals, but that, that's just yeah, on the but girls' even, side. But even then, like, you know, our district 28 was just was was incredible for both for both the boys and the girls absolutely it was just stout it was heavy man it was and, it was top notch and you know, looking looking at this list you know for me the the only the ones that that, that stand out that had an argument to be a co uh, first taylor bent to you know taylor mentioned her but uh, uh brooke castillo midfielder i thought you know she could have easily been a, a co-mvp yeah um for a uh, for a midfield you know, coming from reagan you know but she's she's only a junior she had 13 goals, 21 assists. Yeah. Uh, you know, she's had, she had a, a, a great year. She had that assist to, uh, um, to Taylor for uh, the game winner against, yeah. against Johnson. And, and what a lot of people don't think, uh, don't, if people don't see about that plan, I'm just going to give a little bit. Everybody talks about that goal by Taylor. That's, that's individual. Let's talk about the team. This young lady actually had the ball taken. Johnson starts running the other way. Brooks starts running all behind her, makes the defensive stop. Looks up, sees Taylor, magic. Yeah, that's the progression of the whole thing. So she could have easily have been to me a co midfielder of the year, absolutely, um, from, from District Twenty Eight. But then also Isabel Hernandez out of Madison, senior, eight goals, eighteen assists. Um, you know, she had a, and just an incredible year. Um, so to me, those are those are the standouts of you know who could have possibly been co's for uh, for the girls side for District Twenty Eight. Um, but you know, going through going through this list for uh, for first teamers. We had a uh, for goalie, uh, London Suarez, London out of, Suarez, yeah, out of Madison, Emma O'Brien from Reagan, Lauren Mueller from Reagan, Alyssa uh, Capatillo from Reagan, uh, Cameron Simpson from Johnson, Bailey Fitzsimmons from MacArthur, Sally Mills, Churchill, Mills, yeah, Tatum Tomac from Clark, freshman. Oh yeah, that's another one that you got to watch out for. We haven't spoken much about her, but this one. She's a freshman, along with this other young freshman girl from um, from Madison, um, uh, Brooke Martinez, too. Yeah. Um, and then uh, for the midfielders, we had Brooke Castillo, Reagan, Presley Draw from Johnson, J.C. Bass, Madison, Isabel Hernandez, Madison, Tia Vlodman, uh, Brandeis, and I apologize to all the players that I'm losing names. I'm going to You're close enough. Tonight. They know exactly who they are. You keep trucking, man. <laughs> Laura Perales from Roosevelt. Logan Garza, Clark. Anna Biggins, Clark. For the forwards, Camille Palacios, Johnson, freshman. Yeah, Camille. Um, uh, Kyleen Zinn, Lee, Emily Height, Clark, and then Taylor Tomac from Clark. It's a, it's a stout list, man. I can't. I, I've been following women's soccer. Actually, so that began with girls reporting back 2017. That's a stout list. I think that's one of the best lists that I've seen in, in, in the last three years. I don't even include COVID because let's just not even talk about that. But this list, I mean, bouncing back soccer wise, this list shouldn't even exist. But these girls absolutely, absolutely crush. Oh, yeah. Them. And, you, and, you know, you mentioned Brooke Martinez, freshman. Finished the uh, second team all district. We're, we're expecting great things. Here. Just, just, girl. just yeah. like her sister, expecting uh, great things. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so that's one of those freshmen that is just like, we need to mention this because the future's coming and it is, it's here now. We're not even waiting to see who the potentials are. These sophomores, juniors, and freshmen are actually playing. Now, let's get into this real quick. That's insane, uh, 6A. Talking about freshmen, sophomores, and juniors on a varsity team taking their teams over 500 into playoffs and in some cases straight into state. Yeah. You know, freshmen. that's insane, man. That's, that's why I keep telling folks San Antonio college. I mean, San Antonio itself is, is just an on tap territory of just pure soccer talent. Yeah. I mean, we well, have to, well, to go to, to, to piggyback off of, you know, mentioning a freshman and, and varsity and taking a team to, uh, to the playoffs. Let's get into 296A now for the boys' side. Let's do this. Okay. And and I'm gonna have a freshman that, you know, 
just like we came up with the utility award for uh for district 28 you know obviously nobody in san antonio has a utility utility award no but what, what shocks me about 29 they don't have a newcomer award no and here on our show we're gonna do it we're gonna we're gonna award that young man let's do it okay so for 29 6 a that they had co-mvps um co-mvp first one was oscar valencia yes junior from harlan yes sir and Efren Duarte from Duarte. Washington. Duarte. Oh boy. So deserving. Um, you know, Oscar finished with, with uh, 12 goals, seven assists. Harlan was was best team, uh, you know, in the district by far. One of the best teams in the city. So, agree with it. Efren finished with uh, 25 goals, 14 assists. Took Marshall to the playoffs. Unbelievable year. Insane. I 100% agree with each, I mean, with that newcomer yes. award. So offensive, offensive player of the year, Riley Hawes. Yeah. Marshall, 29 goals, 20 assists. Boom. Defensive player of the year, Tomas Olivares. Harlan, Harlan had the top defense. I'm with it. Co midfielder, midfielders of the year. So they went, they went with the two. Leonardo Rolada, Rosales Ovida. Yeah. From, uh, from home, senior, 18 goals, six assists. And then Ryan Jacinto, junior out of a uh, out of O'Connor, uh, three goals, three assists. But he's one of those players that fits just into that utility award type of a uh, type of players. Oh yeah, he's, he's a just a junkyard, just a he's, junkyard dog. He's a midfielder. Future. He's a boss. Yeah, watch him play in club. He's a, just a great player. But now comes to, to our uh, our newcomer. So District Twenty Nine doesn't have a newcomer. To me, it it would have had to have been uh, Graydon Richards. Yeah, Gray, one hundred percent freshman. Richards, fourteen goals. Three assists. I think he had like three hat tricks for uh, for Harlan. Sure and these did. hat tricks came in district play. He did. They weren't yeah. they weren't in you know a, a, a Just, random yeah, tournament yeah, or enough. anything like that. Yeah. Like hat-tricks. in district, fourteen goals, three assists as a freshman. And and the thing about about that Harlan team because he didn't get much time much playing time in uh in playoffs. Um, they were they had injuries. Harlan had a lot of key oh, injuries yeah, throughout the entire season. And then they got help. And, and Graydon stepped in along with his brother, Deuce, um, who's a senior. Graydon stepped in and helped freaking, you know, bounce that team up. Key goals, key assists, just an absolute baller. I can't wait to see what he does for the next three years. It's going to be insane. You but he is, he is straight up to him. Soy Sam football. Newcomer yeah. of the year. He's he's Straight my up. newcomer of the city. City as a freshman doing that on one of the top teams from yeah. from this in the city, Harlan. That's and and he did great. He did great in the district play, and he did great in in regional plays. I mean, this kid, yeah, newcomer of the award. Congratulations, yep. man. Well deserved. You you absolutely came off. That's that X factor that every coach wishes to figure out. Like I'm struggling. I have a great team. Who's my guy off the bench? Harlan's got him. So I'm very excited for the future for them. Congratulations yep. for that 6A Soccer then, Soy Saf Newcomer of the Year Award. And then just looking at, you know, the the, the players that didn't make, you know, uh, co-MVPs, we, we, we just mentioned Deuce Richards, Avery Richards, midfielder. You know, he finished with 16 goals, 17 assists. To me, he could have easily have been um, a third, you know, co-midfielder from, yeah, exactly. uh, from that, from that district. Yeah. Uh, and then Devin Hamill over at, uh, at Harlan Senior, uh, you know, him along with his teammate, you know, they, they should have just had co-teammates for, for the defensive player because he was, you know, he was just – Harlan had the best defense um, in, in that district, so they could have easily, easily been it. And then uh, just another, another co-offensive MVP, it could have been uh, Leonardo uh, Pania Garcia from Stevens. 18 goals, six assists, senior Stevens. Stevens was a win away from, from making playoffs. So if, if he makes, if they make playoffs, are we talking about him as, as an MVP and, and yeah. somebody else being, being a co? No, absolutely. You have to. There's no, there's no doubt that that's how that would be the talk. And then some, look at those numbers. And then finally, you know, the one MVP that we didn't, we didn't get to was just goalkeeper of the year. And there's only one kid from that district yeah. that, that it could be. And it's got to be Dominic. Yeah, Dom. Dom Pena, Harlan, only junior, but, you know, by far the best goalie in, on, in, in uh, District 29. Um, well, you know, well-deserving of, uh, of that award. So, uh, so that, that, you know, that's 
that's our uh, our MVPs from from District 29. Yeah, it's insane. That's a big list. I mean, District 29 was just loaded this year. Um, obviously, with Harlan going to face the eventual state champions uh, in uh, Lake Travis, but insane, insane, insane district for sure. So let's give the the rundown for the first teamers. So we had a uh, Benjamin Rios, Brennan, Eden O'Connor, Brennan, Aiden, uh, Aiden Val Valenzuela, Brennan, Avery Richards, Harlan. Devin Hamill, Harlan, uh, Graydon Richards, Harlan, Sam Allen, also from Harlan, Ricardo Tovar, Holmes, Edwin Martinez from Jay, Maximus Campos, A uh, Angel Garcia, Adam Guzman, Marshall, Joey De La Torre, Ethan Diaz, Josiah Sahin, O'Connor, Leonardo Garcia, Kenneth Garcia, Stevens, Aiden Howell, Taft, Diego Garcia and Jorge Guevara, Guevara from uh, from Warren. So those are your uh, your first teamers from District 29. You know, I mean, I can't disagree with one bit, one bit with with all those first teamers. Like each one of those individuals actually played stellar football all season long. I got to see a couple of them just go. I mean, they just went toe to toe with everybody, never backed down, led their teams. And, and just made individual statistics, individual plays that just made them stand out. Um, and to me, you can go by the numbers all day. You can sit there and recite a number. At the end of the day, it was a talent that got these kids into this position. They, and them, they themselves made it happen. And if, it, it's just not, how do I say it, man? It just didn't, they just didn't do this against some random team. They were doing this against teams that were just as good if not better than they were, and they just came out and performed. Yep, in in district, it's all about a uh, in district. You know, and that's one of the things I wish that they would change. You know, we, we start counting goals as soon as uh, as Season's soon as we get in, over, you know yeah. season as soon as the season starts. Um, you know, I, I wish that they would uh, um, they would start counting goals from when district starts because yeah. then you're you know you're comparing apples to apples for district play exactly and not you know because you know you look at you look at what Harlan does, what what Southwest does, Reagan, Lee. You know, they go and and find tournaments to play against the best, to get their teams tested and, and battle ready for district play. You know, they go up to Dallas and play in the, um, playing the, the, the Dallas cup. Um, they go and play in the, the, the Lake Travis tournament, um, or they'll go down to Houston and play in the, the Houston tournament down there. You know, so, so they're playing against the best teams, whereas some other teams, you know, they'll, they'll do their, their warmups against, um, against local tournaments. And, and it's not a knock on those tournaments, but you're not playing against, you know, against some of the best in the state. And you know, to, to me, really, they should start counting start counting goals um, and 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 goals allowed war you know uh, stats once we get into district play because then you're you know you're really just comparing apples to apples. Correct. Now we have one one last the uh, women on the on the girls side. Correct. So the twenty nine six a on the twenty nine six a. So for uh, overall MVP for twenty nine six a, Malia Dominguez, Jr. Um, I mean, what can you say? 45 goals, five crushed, assists. Crushed, 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 crushed. Wow. Um, goalkeeper, Madison Harris. You know her, the Man, freshman. Yep. Yeah. Um, Madison Harris, she just destroys them. She only gave up 19 goals in the season, less than a, a goal a game. I think she was at a 0.86 goals a game. Um, offensive player of the year, Isabel Hernandez, junior from Brendan, 27 goals, 26 assists. Um, insane. insane. Defensive player of the year. Jordan uh, Bearden, senior out of Brennan. Brennan had the top defense. You know, what, you know, what can you say about that? And then midfielder of the year, Anna Parra, another senior out of Brennan, 23 goals, 13 assists. Um, there's nothing, you know, looking at, at these lists of, of first teamers, you know, it, it's, it's hard to, uh, to argue against any of these girls that uh, won MVPs for, uh, not, for their positions. No, no, not at all. I mean, this, this is, I mean, well-deserved to each and every one of them. Undisputed. Perfect list. I love it. Yes. Yep. No, good to go. So let's let's get into uh, the first teamers now. So out of Brennan, David uh, Blackmere. Sorry. David Blackmore, Lauren Liguez, Caitlin Graber, and Kylie Hurley from nice. Brennan. Nice. Yeah, Sydney Holmes, Chelsea Andres, and Kalisa Kuchka. From uh, from Harlan, Soraya uh, Ruiz, Victoria De La Fuente from Holmes, Annabella Rodriguez, Mia Mia Sanias from Jay, uh, Rayona Sims from Marshall, Maggie Vandersis, the the goalie, yeah, 
Emma Tomas, Chloe Ramirez, Malia Dominguez, and Nia Leslie, all from O'Connor. Uh, Catherine Calcutti and Leah Andre Alvarado from Stevens. Michaela Peterson, Jordan Matthews. She's she's a ball. I, Jordan Matthews. You know, I, I I take it back. If there was one player I, I would have uh, um, thought about, could have been a co. It would have been Jordan. Jordan. Yeah, um, for sure. But I mean, she's sophomore. And then Layla Rangel, um, all three of those girls are out of Taft. And then Lillian uh, Noblet, another uh, sophomore out of Warren. And so that's uh, your first teamers from, from District 29 on the girls' side. You know, this whole district, I mean, it's just loaded. Tons of talent, young talent. For sure, there's got to be a state run coming in out of here. I'm very hopeful and I'm very thankful for this um, because, I mean, let's just talk about I mean, Malia Dominguez, 47 goals out of O'Connor. You cannot deny that. I mean, the young lady just went, I mean, just went next level this year. And again, set the standard. And there's so many, so many that, you know, that come be, that are coming that are watching this and just moving forward with it. So, man, you know, it's a great opportunity for these players just to get put out on here, you know, uh, top 10s, top 11, you know, all these things like that. But at the end of the day, they all played absolutely outstanding in their district and crushed it when it comes down to play. Yeah, every, every single one of them. Um and then, you know, finally, you know, just jumping into uh, to District 27 on the boys' side. Unfortunately, I haven't seen the list for the girls' side. We'll have to come back to that because everybody, you know, deserves their, uh, their yeah, shot out. I think for right now, what we're going to do is I think – And we also need to give 5A their love too. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to wait on that. I think right now we just – as we start getting things like – as we start getting them, I want to mention them as a whole within their district. But um, it's up to you. If you want to mention those already that have already been listed – Go ahead, but we can actually um, do this again and bring it back up. But you know what? what? What we have on hand right now, let's let it, let's let it rip for the um, um the boys side on twenty seven on twenty seven. Just let's have it because that's what we have on hand. And these guys they did an outstanding job for twenty seven. So oh yeah, um, you know so so Brad Dilly yeah no surprise there. forward of the year. You know one thing one thing that twenty seven doesn't do is they don't give actually they don't give two awards. They don't give a newcomer and they don't give an overall. Um, MVP for the entire district. I think they just go through the numbers, put the list together, yeah. pump it out. That's it. Um, but I mean, when you when you look at this list, though, every single one of these players are deserving of, of, uh, of their awards. So Brad Dildy um, from uh, Smithson Valley. Smithson Valley was uh, the district winner. Absolutely made it to uh, uh, round three before round getting three. knocked out by uh, by Reagan. But Brad finished with forty three goals, eleven assists. Same just, kids, kids stop. Amazing! I can't wait to see what he does at the college uh, level. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna crush it for sure. Midfielder of the year, Smithson Valley, Danny uh, Danny McKee, sixteen goals, thirteen assists, just a solid player. It's uh, you know unfortunate that he wasn't able to play against Reagan because who knows what uh, what could have happened if he if he was uh, part of that that game. So for defender of the year, they they went with the with two of them. So out of Steel, you had Chase Johnson, and from Judson, you had Christian Alacron. And then goalie of the year was the ex SAFC goalie uh, from uh, from Steel, Daniel De Guzman. Yeah, it was man. Yeah, he's a good player, man. He's a heck of a keeper. Heck of a keeper. He did an outstanding job over there at Steel, put him in position. But you know, it was a, it was a tough district, that's for sure. Oh, for sure. You know, and, and you know, looking at looking at this list, you know, for for players that could have possibly have, have uh, jumped in for the on the the co side, to me. Clemens had two. You know, they they were tied with the uh, uh, with Smithson Valley for for district um, district winners or district championship. But uh, Case and Dilworth, to me, he could have been a easy have been a co MVP for uh, for the midfield. Fourteen goals, three assists. Yeah. Um. You know, he he could have easily have uh, have been in there. And then um, also uh, his um, the the midfield out of Stevens Smith from or Stevens. The midfield from uh, Smithson Valley. Valley, Alex Franz. Yeah, seven goals, thirteen assists. He should he could have definitely been a been a co in there uh, along with uh, with his teammate Danny McKee. And then um, you know just looking at at the rest of the list, one kid that one kid that really stands out to me, um, and he actually finished second team in this district, but Cole Hansen, the Cole goalie, Hansen, the goalie yeah, out of Smithson Valley. You know the. The argument that I heard for him or uh, against him was how good his defense was. Yeah, absolutely. so kind of so kind of goes along with 
um, you know, with the the Shama TV when we were talking about District 28 and how good that Reagan defense was. But but the saves that that we saw from Cole um, all season, especially, and, and I know playoffs don't don't play don't play into a correct um, these, the MVPs in the first team, but the 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 PK saves that he had against Westlake insane. for Smithson Valley insane was. Incred- right in- now. Incredible. Insane. You know, he was he was you know giving up one goal, you know, I think one goal game. Um it, to me, I don't believe that he should have been second team. Um I there's he no easily way. could have been um easily should have been a first team. Yeah, should um, have been especially as, as you know as a senior. Um and he could have easily have been uh you know been a co goalie of the year along with uh with Daniel from from Steel. I mean, like yeah, man, Dan Dan De Guzman's outstanding. And, and I've seen both of them play, but I, I, on this one, I think, uh, uh, man, he should have been up there. He should have been up yeah. there. It, it wasn't for second team because what he did, folks, over the season, I mean, the guy was just fearless in the box, challenging every ball that came through. And let's be honest, not many came through get, to get in the back of the net. So, yeah, and then, huge shout out to him. And then, you know what, I'm in, in, in looking at this list, I'm going to give out another Davis Award. Oh, here uh, we go. A, another utility award for, for District 27. And to me, it goes to Matt Capetillo um, from Smithson Valley. Yeah, he, Capetillo, man. He is a beast back there playing the six. Um, and you, you, you know, dirty you don't, work. You don't hear from him. No, nope, and man, he, he just dirty makes work back there. Bone crushing tackles and, and drops, you know, dimes, yeah. you know, all throughout that midfield. Um, and so to me, <laughs> he's a utility award, yeah. hashtag Davis award, yeah. MVP you, winner for, uh, I, for district 27. Absolutely. I enjoyed, I enjoyed watching some of the forwards challenge him. And I think they would take him on early just cause it was, they would look at him, you know, and they'd, they'd say, Hey man, I can take this guy. I think in their mind, I, I remember that was my position. I was a forward. So I was very arrogant and thinking I could take down these guys. And then I was humbled really quick and got a deal with what he does he he's quick he's mobile he's aggressive he's physical and he can just he stays on his toes a voice getting gets off his heels stays on his toes stays shoulder to shoulder with his with his, with the play and makes results so the yeah, guy is definitely definitely up there in my opinion he, he was a he was a boss in that that Reagan uh Smithson Valley playoff game no I should, it, absolutely it, it would have been it would have been a little bit more it was, it was fun to, to watch uh to watch Matt you know captain that that midfield Absolutely. And, and so then just finishing up, you're looking at uh, the, the rest of the first team for, for District 27. Um, from New Braunfels, we had Jorge Cruz and Mason Martinez um, out of Steel, Michael Patterson, Andres Gutierrez. From Clemens, we mentioned Casey Dilworth, but also uh, Christian Govia, Max Walsh, and then Amir Simpson out of Judson. From Wagner, Timothy Vasquez. From South Sam. Walter Ramirez, uh, Smithson Valley, you had uh, Dave Namaya, Jax Atkins, and Alex Friends, and then from East Central, Jeremiah Malone. And so that was your uh, your first teamers for for District Twenty Seven. Yeah. Again, tough. you know, congrats to everybody yeah, that made uh, that made second team, that made honorable mention, and then a special shout out to all of our uh, academic, all districts, oh, academic, yeah. all states. That's important because that at the end of the day, That's these guys. Matters. These guys and girls, they're all student athletes, yep. student first. Um, you know, they these these athletes put in so much extra work that goes unrecognized. The light, you know, late practices, late games, getting home late from and still having to knock out a paper or study for a test and still making, uh, you know, the academic side. That to me is huge. So a special shout out to all those players that made a um academic all district and academic all state yeah and you know what um now that we're on and now that we got congratulations we got through the list i hope you guys absolutely you know you know take this all in because this is one of those first things that we're going to be improving on when it comes down to mentions and accolades and things like that we're going to be keeping it going this is not the last time you're going to be hearing names like this we got a whole summer to go we got a whole four months be six months before Soccer season starts again next January, but I'm straight up tell y'all. Um, and congratulations also to the parents being represented here. You know, I think this is one of those years that I always, and I've always made fun of it. I'm just like, man, soccer parents, they're so hard on their kids and all these things. 
But you know what? This is one of those years where I actually got to go out there, actually just enjoy the beauty of the game, sit in the stands, listen to 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 what's going on, and the encouragement that I have that I hear from mom and dad and Theo and Tia and everybody that shows up and the the fans and the school and the district, the cheerleaders, the superintendents. I got to talk to so many athletic directors that were out there just supporting their kids in soccer. You know, that was beautiful. I think that needs to continue. Keep it up. Each one of you folks that made this list, congratulations. 6A, thank you for breaking it down with us here, um, mentioning all these players and those that needed to be mentioned. Congratulations. We want to give shout outs to Newcomers Awards, the Davis Utility Cup Award, Defenders of the Years, as we like to call it. Thank you, Taylor Jernigan. Thank you, Davis Kelly, for being on the show today. Thank you, 6A. Outstanding show. Um, folks, keep these kids, track these kids, because they're going to be making some noise. They're definitely going to be putting San Antonio on the national stage. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, and special... Special shout out goes out to uh, you know just just lethal Texas. Yeah, the, the work that the work that, uh, soccer, yeah. that he's doing, um, and then uh, you know just our, our guys over at, at my SA, um, the the work that they do to, to update all the all the stats, um, and you know just coming out with the the weekly uh, the weekly MVPs and game balls, you know just everybody around the city and, and what they're doing to help grow um, grow the game, grow high school sports, um, you know give us a give us you know we're now trying to do our thing on uh, on Instagram now. Um, so we're trying to kind yes. of figure out figure out that platform and see there how we can go. make that yeah, work. Welcome you know, to the Instagram world, my man. It's it's a it's a whole yeah, different it's a whole different ballgame. When you look when you look at a lot of these, you know, ma majority of these high school athletes, majority of them are on uh, Instagram. It's great to see them, you know, joining on the on the Twitter side because I know that's where a majority of of college coaches are, and that's what kind of created this whole thing for us is to get these kids and and spotlight them in front of college coaches. But I also know that these kids are also on a uh, on the gram. And so, uh, you know, trying to uh, to take our platform and put it onto a, to Instagram is something that we're we're working on and we're looking forward to uh, to doing. And then, you know, you'll catch us out at uh, at club games. You know, we're, we're we are big into uh, the State Cup, um, ECNL, SAFC Academy. Um, so you'll you'll catch us out there, hoping to do some some live game um, feeds. And so, you know, continue to, to give us a follow, continue to give us the post of the, the clips, players, parents, coaches, post those, post those clips of, uh, of your kids that spotlight them. And we are going to try to do right now, it'll probably be a, 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 every two weeks, we'll do a, our, our goals of the week and, yes. and save of the week yeah. and, and assist of the week. Um, just because I know that, you know, the, the clips for a club are a lot harder to, to get to um, than, uh, than highlight or than, than high school. And, you know, some of them are, aren't, aren't as clear, but you know what? We're going to make it work. These kids are, are putting in the work, putting in the training, playing club, playing club in, in this Texas heat. So, shoot, let, let's get those highlights out there. These college coaches, you know, they're in the offseason, too. So what are they doing? They're thumbing, to, thumbing through Twitter. Let's get a let's let's see these, co these college coaches see the talent that we have in San Antonio. So, uh, you know, give us give us a follow follow over on the gram and uh, keep on balling, kids. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's definitely a very, very important. Folks, San Antonio, all those listening in, watching the show, thank you so much for supporting so San Antonio Football, your community soccer journal um, exclusively here. So we're going to be bringing you more. Just as 6A said, we're going to be bringing you all the highlights that we can. We like to work together, trying to make things happen. Keep doing the work out there. Keep making San Antonio absolutely proud. You guys are putting San Antonio on the map. Let's keep crushing it. Let America know that this city is soccer city and our talent is here and it's one of the best in the country. For Soy San Antonio football, Benjamin Dosa, thank you, 6A Soccer, for joining us. We'll catch you next time.